Hi. Um, in this video I would like to talk to you uh, about the situation in uh, North Africa and the Middle East. Um, yeah, this uh, latest phase of transition we're in started with the so-called Arab Spring, uh, which were a series of revolutions starting in North Africa and then basically going as a wildfire through the whole region. And I would like to talk about the spiritual aspects of this. Um, if we look at just the, the, the culture or the awareness of this planet in general, we find that there are several key places where um, ancient cultures sprung up. Um, so there's the, the Nile, uh, which is in Egypt. There's Mesopotamia, which lies in Iraq. And there's the Indus Valley, which lies in Pakistan. And around these areas is where basically uh, art, science, religion started to bloom. So these are really the sources of our modern society, of our modern cultures. And it is also in these places where spiritual powers were most active in guiding humanity forwards, in helping them to evolve their consciousness, evolve their spirituality, evolve their morality. So these are very important sites and they actually should be sites for any spiritual person for pilgrimage to really reconnect to these forces which guided the world for such a long time and who are in a way still trying to do so even now. Um, one of the problems which has, has happened is that um, it's a little bit like a, uh, like a drain, it can get clogged by dirt. And it's the same with the, with the holy site or a place of spiritual uh, pilgrimage. So there is a source there, there is in a way a, a drain there uh, through which this higher yeah, inspiration, higher energies can flow. But lower energies, they tend to block the drain, they tend to blot out the light. So it becomes dim or twisted or not easy to perceive. And these lower energies generally arise from the ego, so they can be uh, war, um, fear, um, hatred, uh, any form of aggression or greed or other uh, sinful behavior. Um, if we look at these regions now, then we see that, um, yeah, especially around uh, uh, yeah, Baghdad and in uh, Egypt, there are actually a lot of these lower energies um, yeah, being generated. So these kind of clog up the drains, dimming the light, and thereby the light is not dim dimmed just in these regions, not just in the Middle East, but actually for the whole planet, for the whole world. So it is a big problem uh, if we look at it from a spiritual perspective. Another site we should look at is what is the intention, what is the greater plan behind this whole, whole change. If we look at it, we see that it's a very difficult transition. So you've had there in both um, um, Iraq and Egypt and still holding on in Syria, uh, autocratic regimes. So there's one strong man, one leader, who is basically identified with the country as a whole and tries to manage that. Uh, these are secular regimes because they're kind of just looking more at the interest of the country rather than any specific idealism. It's very much pragmatism which, uh, which governs them. And what we see now is actually the, the yeah, evils of democracy rearing their head. Um, because in democracy it's generally a system where uh, different elements of society clustered together in groups or parties. And these parties each have their own agenda. They identify with their own members, with their own little niche in society, and they try to enlarge that niche. So they're not so much serving the country, or they're not so much serving its population or its nature, um, but they're serving just a small fragment. And this fragment is trying to enlarge itself and since it's a zero-sum game, it can only grow by diminishing others. And this way of politics, of trying to get as much as possible while repressing others, 
is what is currently going on in most of the Western world, but it has also now started recently in North Africa and the Middle East. Um, this type of democracy, as we can well clearly see, is not for the best interest of the country as a whole, and definitely not in the best interest of the person who is not the strongest, unless they can make some deal or coalition <coughs> with a stronger party. Ultimately, what is the desire in those regions, and what is the hope in those regions, um, is that there will be a return of the uh, of the the leading impulse of these very high spiritual powers which exist in these places, of these holy energies, these divine energies. But these divine energies, they need channels. They need ways to manifest themselves. They need people. So they can be heard, they can be carried by them. So what this region is really in need of is basically holy men and women, um, people who are very, uh, who are leaders in science, who are leaders in spirituality, who are leaders in art, to create actually a new renaissance, not just for themselves, but actually for the world. But this kind of heart for this yeah, leadership to arise, because leadership requires a lot of freedom, a lot of experimentation, a lot of um, research to play and um, all these impulses, they come to us in a very um, raw form. It's almost like an egg which needs to be hatched and then the young need to grow into maturity. So every impulse which comes from this divine, whether it is on yeah, in a scientific impulse, or a religious impulse, or an artistic impulse. It needs space to grow, it needs to be nurtured, it needs to be supported. The people who are carrying these impulses need to be supported, they need to have the room to uh, develop these impulses into something which the world can use, instead of which is just a personal message as it starts out. Um, and this is hard to do if there is actually a war going on. And this can be a physical war, as it is in Syria, or it can be a political war. But anyway, a war is a war. And a war is, generates fear, it generates aggression, it generates hatred. And these low energies prevent these higher impulses from being heard. It also desensitizes the people in that area to these higher impulses. So by having these bad circumstances, people simply get cut off from the higher energies, from the higher impulses. And it is very important for those people, as the people in, in Western Europe, to really try to reconnect to these impulses of the um, really the, the amazement uh, which there exists in the mind of the scientist who wants to learn what can be learned about the world, who wants to develop deeper understanding. The same is true for the spiritual person who also wants to unravel the mysteries of the, the cosmos, larger even than the scientist, because the scientist is limited often to just the physical part of the world, while the artist actually encompasses not just the physical part of the world, but also the personal part of the world, the world of personal experience and emotions. And the spiritual person or religious person actually wants to understand the immaterial cosmos as well. And these three groups uh, actually should work together to create a new world because the new world should have both material yeah, innovations. It should change on a material level for which we need science. It should change on a social level for which we need artists. And it should change on a spiritual level for which we need priests and priestesses and holy people who can, yeah, hear the voice of yeah, the divine and translate it and thereby inspire also the scientists and the, uh, the artists. So in a way any leadership, whether it is an autocracy um, or uh, where there is just you know, a clique or one person leading the whole country or whether it is, is a democracy, um, never should this impulse be made subservient to the warring factions. 
and unfortunately this is the reality we are facing today. Um, and this is a troubling reality because what we often see is that um, any conflict tends to escalate, any group tends to grow, yeah, grab for more and more extreme measures to win. And this is also to do with the modern concept of war. War used to be about, in a way, showing, uh, demonstrating kind of supremacy. So uh, it can be a military parade, it can be uh, um, indeed a weapons test, um, but it can also be uh, just uh, rhetoric, moral rhetoric. Um, and it can be art. It is basically trying to show that your way of life, your way of thinking is better than that of another. Uh, this can be a positive thing, so you can uh, in a way stimulate the other to also to become stronger, uh, to become wiser, to innovate more, or it can be a negative thing when it turns actually destructive and it turns um, yeah, more envious, uh, hateful, resentful of the other's success instead of having admiration and respect for your enemies. And this disrespectful attitude towards other people who are basically your equals um, is a great problem. And it is, it is gaining, it is growing, this distance that people feel to their brothers and sisters. Uh, another great problem is the, the, the limitation of freedom. Because it is fine that every little group in society wants to create their own utopia. But it is not their place to enforce their utopia on other people. Every group should be able to create their own utopia according to the guidance they receive from their own hearts, from their own spirit, um, or through the uh, indirect guidance they get from their from their leadership. And um, so, in a way, um, politics and governance should be less of a war and should be more of a, um, of a synergy. So these groups, they can be enemies, they can be predators, they can be hunting each other, uh, hunting for members, hunting for money, hunt, hunting for sports, uh, sponsorships. And then it's a true competition in the worst sense of the word. Um, it can also be parasitical, that they actually leech off each other um, uh, it can be symbiotic, that they actually need each other to survive, but it can be also synergetic, when their interaction actually supports each other and they both grow better because of it. And it can also be synarchic, which basically means that even though they are very different, they have very different paths, very different goals, uh, they're both inspired actually by the same higher power, higher force. So their, their actions, although they may be different, actually are parts of a bigger whole which is being built by intelligences which are working from a higher level of consciousness. But if we look at this synarchic solution, we see that there is very much a need for a renaissance in this world. A spiritual renaissance, the artistic renaissance, and also scientific renaissance. And I think this is more of a, of a social uh, renaissance which should happen than a political one. Because politics is basically the science of how to work with power, while sociology is more about changing the awareness and the relationship of people to each other. And of course these two subjects go hand in hand. And what is needed is that actually the, the leadership we get as a people, as a society, but also politically, um, should be more of a meritocracy. They should be people who have this desire to cooperate, to work together, rather than to win at the expense of their opponent. Um, and these uh, new leaders should also be aware, or at least be counseled by people who have this yeah, higher guidance, higher impulse. So they should be talking with artists and scientists and uh, spiritual people. And with spiritual people, I don't necessarily mean religious people. 
um, because there's a big difference between, um, in a way, spirituality and um, dogmatic religion. So in dogmatic religions, there is basically a, a law, a rule, some tenets, uh, a way of life which is set out, which yeah, people are meant to follow. And uh, often there are very good reasons for these, uh, for these strictures. And often these strictures are beneficial. So I'm not saying that religion is a bad thing or that by definition dogmatism is a bad thing. But leadership should actually be um, leading the people forward. So they should have a vision of the future. They should have a goal of how humanity is transforming, how humanity is, uh, is growing. Um, and trying to transform this world for the better. And for this we need actual direct guidance from the divine. So there is a need for people who have contact with higher powers. Um, so priests and priestesses are necessary, but not of the dogmatic kind, but rather of the inspired kind. And actually for artists, scientists and spiritual people, um, it is very important to live a relatively pure life, to be able to receive these higher impulses. So if, as a scientist, an artist or spiritual person, you're caught up a lot in, yeah, in fighting, in struggling to survive, in fear, in stress, um, it is impossible for you to yeah, re remain and maintain uh, your purity so that you are able to yeah, receive this higher impulse. Because the more stress you have, the more hatred, the more anger, uh, the more fear there is within you, um, the less receptive you will be to this higher impulse. So it is important in a way to have a le relatively pure lifestyle, uh, relatively pure food, and also to uh, try to practice yourself in um, maintaining your own stability. Um, there are very good practices in, in many religions, uh, such as prayer, meditation, um, purification rituals, to really maintain your, um, your equilibrium, your own balance, so that your personality is balanced, your life force is balanced, and your connection with also these higher energies is balanced. And I think that the people in general should demand that um, such guidance uh, should be followed and should be given both to them individually uh, and to them as a society, but especially to those who are in power, who have the job of leading them. And they can't lead blindly. They can't lead just being motivated by their own personal fears or their own personal hungers, their own personal agendas or that of a small fragment of society. Because we are all brothers and sisters, no matter what our differences are, on a religious level, on a cultural level, or um, on, a, on, a, uh, on a sexual level. All of us have been created for a purpose, and we all have to fulfill those purposes, and they can be very different. They can be different for different cultures, they can be different for different religions, they are different for men and women, um, they're also different from, yeah, depending on the age. And all these differences need to blend together like a giant puzzle. And to resolve this puzzle, to create a healthy uh, society, which is very beneficial for, the, for all beings within it. So the people, the animals, the plants, the land itself, um, the spirits. It is a difficult task. It's not an easy thing. And all these aspects need to be cared for. And this is why we need this diversity to care for all aspects of our lives. Well, I know this is not a solution, uh, but it's at least a direction for us to, to work towards. And I hope that in the Western world we don't have to face a crisis at which the likes of which is currently being faced in North Africa and in the Middle East. But in a way, what we see now there as a war has been going on for ages already in Western Europe. And unfortunately, this is a war which is yeah, not going that well in Western Europe, just like it is not going that well in North Africa 
and the Middle East. And I just hope we can turn the tide, not so much to make one side or the other win, but to make all of us win. Thank you for listening.